So yeah, anyway, they worked out pretty slick. I was impressed um, overall. Hey, Good. how you doing? <laughs> Howdy, folks. Uh, Bear Kadowski here, known throughout the industry as the Barracuda. Here with my good friend, working class woodsman, Chris and Chris. <laughs> Otherwise known as G GC. GC, but we don't talk about that. Too we don't much. talk about that. No, no. Too, too much pain. We too just pain. Uh, crossed the border illegally back uh, into the into the United States here, and we brought with us a load of snowshoes from northern Quebec, some from my Cree friends, and a couple of beaver tails that we are going to cook up this evening and they're going to be absolutely delicious they are uh, but absolutely amazing craftsmanship on these snowshoes so my good friend david bosom from uj bugamu Quebec uh, gifted me this pair about uh, uh six years ago or so and then i always wanted the other style as well so i actually purchased these from david this this past year on a trip way up north and the, 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 you know, the craftsmanship is absolutely amazing. I'll put it up near the camera so you can get a real close look at the, how fine the weave is. But I got to tell you, I'm, if, if those of you are familiar with what a smelting net is, it's, it's, it's half the size of that. This, this is just such, the workmanship in this is so incredible. I mean, I've been looking, I've been looking at them since we crossed the border. And, uh, <laughs> at it's, night. It's at night. <laughs> and it's just, I don't know, it's... I wish I would hire if I could find these I would hire these people to do anything for me because this this is just an amazing work So these folks always carry a pair of each of these on winter trips, right? So if we're traveling a long way down the trail, you know trying to snowshoe 20 miles or whatever These are the traveling shoes and then these are more for in the thick uh, Thick brush thick bush country because they're easier to back up And so you're walking along the trail you wear the long shoes you stop to check traps You're in and out of the thick brush you put on the short ones, but no, that's like almost like the what, what we call the trap uh, the uh, the bear paws, but modified times hundred right so this one is officially as far as I know is known actually appropriately for this evening as a beaver tail okay because the the heel of the shoe looks very similar to the tail of a beaver that's a, that's a that's an amazing coincidence amazing it is. amazing because actually <laughs> like we planned it like we planned it I, I don't make this stuff up <laughs> but uh, but to get back to uh, to kind of what we're, we're all we're gonna do tonight after uh, to have another drink is we're going to cook two beaver tails and uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it uh, basically what this is is a, is a fat store for the beaver that means that inside under this skin is actually technically I think two layers of skin it's been a while since I tried to cook one but inside that is a bone that goes down the middle and then there's like basically just it's it's like cartilage or fat I mean it's 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 pretty much hundred uh, percent fat if you will but what we're going to do, we're going to do it a couple different ways. We're going to heat it up on the grill to heat up the skin and try to separate it from the actual uh, uh, fat that's inside in the bone. And then we're going to skin it. And I'm going to take one and I'm actually going to cook it on the grill like you would a, a chicken wing or anything else with a little bit of barbecue sauce or whatever we come up with. The other one I'm going to deep fry because I don't care what whoa, it whoa, is. Whoa. You had me at deep fry. Yeah, you don't need to say anymore. I'm sold. Anything tastes good when you deep fry it. So we're gonna deep fry one and barbecue the other, and uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of excited how it's gonna turn out. But that's that's the gig that's the gig tonight. So you guys are welcome to come along and see how we make out with it. So I've cooked beaver tail four times in my life. Um, as a young guy, I remember reading in the old books that all the old-timey trappers and stuff would always say it's a delicacy. You know, the beaver tail is the best part of the beaver. And the first three times I cooked it, or maybe I've cooked it three times, I've had it four times, but the first three times I had it, I thought it was one of those things where they would, it was sort of like an initiation where you'd tell the new guy, like, make sure you eat the tail because it's the best part. Because yeah. it was absolutely disgusting. It was just like a big piece of chewing gum, a big piece of gristle. I yeah. really didn't like it. And then the fourth time I cooked it, I, I really enjoyed it. Like, I think it, I think I had to screw it up a couple of times in order to get it right. But once I got it right, you know, I was no longer convinced that it was just a way to sort of uh, make the new guys 
on the trap line, you know, have to eat something while everybody else snickered while watching them. Yeah, I mean, I'll, uh, the first time I ate one, it just made me glad I wasn't an old timer. <laughs> but uh, it, it can be. I think. I think if we do it, we're going to go about. We're going to try it a little bit different, and we're actually going to. I think we're going to make it better. Um, but uh, like like Tim said, I mean, this this was in the old days. You know, you, you, it's all it's all romantic. You hear about these guys, you know, leaving their homes in Massachusetts and, and, and riding a horse out west. And guess what? Those guys went without fat in the kettle for three months at a time. And when you when you trapped a beaver and you bit into that fat, that was the best thing that you've had in in the, you know months. And this is probably what saved a lot of their lives. Definitely. And Even your body knows, right? Like, if you're if you're eating greasy KFC every night or something, oh, yeah. your, your body's not going to be craving this. But if you're living off of snowshoe hairs and bannock and maybe a bit of rice every mm -hmm. now and again, when you bite into this, when you get that fat, you're, it's what your body craves. And I think even Lewis and Clark had a French, I can't, the name escapes me, you may know it, but they had a French chef on their expedition, and one of his specialties was beaver tail. Was it Paul Prudhomme? That's it. If it's not it, it's really close, and I'm sure I'm <laughs> counting on one of you viewers to chime in and spell it correctly, but I think you're right. That sounds very familiar. Poor, much maligned Clark. <laughs> always one of the top bill billing, but it always went to Lewis. There you go. If you ask yep. Clark, he's like, oh, you mean the Clark and Lewis expedition? Like, no, no, yeah. the Lewis and Clark. No, no, the Clark yeah. and Lewis expedition. Yeah. Uh, I, I've never eaten beaver tail, but he said make out and deep fry within two sentences, and I just don't know why we haven't started cooking this yet. Yeah, we're about to start, so let's, that's, let's get on this project. Make out and so deep fry. St <laughs> stick around, and we're going to cook some beaver tails. Yes, sir. Oh. Well, since we're back in the States, I want to take advantage of every uh, modern convenience we have. God, yes. Yeah. They said he was just an insane... Jacob Johnson was an animal. Yeah. I love yeah. the stories, like, there were, I think it was somewhere around, like, uh, current day Woodsville, but he was the boss. It's in that book. Well, one of them, there was a new guy at the camp, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy was writing the story, and they said the jigger, it was 40 below zero, and Jigger Johnson woke up, did a shot of grain alcohol, sitting up at his bunk, awesome. and then walked barefoot down to the spring, yeah. 40 yards away to fill up his, to get a drink of water. That sounds like a Jigger Johnson Great story. story. Okay, so we've got uh, two beaver tails on the grill. We're going to heat them up and bust the skin off, and we're going to uh, skin it like I, like I said, more or less like a fish. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to, uh, this is, this is going to be a fun project. As you can see, the skin is already starting to separate, and it's only been uh, about 10 minutes. But the outer layer is popping up. And what we're going to do is let that char for a while, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to separate it and get us some... Uh, that some bottom layer is already starting to bubble up, so that's what we're shooting for. We want to separate that uh, inedi inedible skin from the actual uh, fat. Well, I don't know about you, Tim, but I've eaten a lot of beaver. And that is a uh, good example of a beaver tail. That's, uh, yeah, it's quite impressive. It's very impressive. Look at that thing. It's all swollen up and just... You know, that's a very healthy beaver. You probably can't see it, but that is that skin is separated from the tail, uh, the fat section of the tail, and we're going to take it inside and skin it out. You can hear it. Hear that? That means that the inside is starting to uh, cook. So we're going to skin it out, and then we're going to cook it again. All right. So we uh, we went out on the grill and we cooked our uh, tail. And I'm in hopes that I can just oh yeah. See what it does is when you heat it up, see how easy that skins off? You can actually just uh, tear it off with your hand, actually. Um, you can see, actually, I don't even need my knife. Once I split it, the there's two layers of skin. You got your outer skin, which, uh, as Tim pointed out, is similar to a snake skin, and there are people that make knife cases out of that. And then you also have a second skin um, that is technically inedible. I don't know what, what I'd even compare it to. But what I'm going to do is just tear this off like that, and then we'll be left with our inner core and that's the part we're going to eat 
And you know they say it's fat, but I don't know. That's like it's got some. Uh, there's some protein there. There's a little bit of protein, not a lot, but most of it's fat. And boom. I gotta admit, this smells delicious. Yeah. Um, delicious. It does. I mean, I'm. I'm surprised, honestly, because the last few times that I tried this, it w I didn't. It wasn't a pleasant experience. As Tim can probably. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, the more times I do this, the better it gets. Yeah, and that's you know that's what you don't eat. All right. But knife, we'll, knife sheath. We're gonna make something out of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So after we cut the slit, uh, we cut it down. Basically, just pull the two uh, the two sides, uh, the two layers of uh, skin off, and it's, it's it's actually easier than flaying a fish. But you uh, you end up with um, literally you know, there's, there's some meat there that we're going to pull off and, and make use of. But you know you end up with all this uh, nutrition right there. I mean, and I gotta admit, this smells delicious. I want to eat it right now. Try it. Uh, try a tiny piece of it. I will try a tiny piece of it. Best margarine I've ever eaten. <laughs> Delicious. Scale of one to ten. How good? Seven. Awesome. I would spread that on a bagel. Honest to God, if I had a bagel, I would sneak in there and absolutely help yourself. Oh, I would, uh, I'd spread that on a bagel and eat it. What do you think? It's good. And that's with no salt and pepper. That's literally the the the, the naked. That's the naked animal. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. That's no, good. Yeah. It's good. It's a it's a spread. We're gonna actually. I've, I've just had a brainstorm. We are gonna we are gonna come out with a beaver tail spread. Spread so, beaver tail. God, are you kidding me? I'll take a hundred boxes. <laughs> a beaver tail spread, and we are gonna make a spread when you're eating your multigrain bagel or your poppy seed or whatever. You're gonna have a beaver tail spread, and you will spread this over your bagel, and you will. So as I it. said, we're gonna deep fry one beaver tail. Uh, traditional with uh, egg and milk wash into my special breading uh, recipe and like anything else we're going to double dip it because why wouldn't you Drop that thing in the grease. And for our second, we are going to barbecue it on the grill. With actually going to follow the rules of culinary. And uh, we'll throw that right on the grill and cook that up, and that'll be our comparison. I gotta admit, this smells really good. Beaver tail. Beaver tail. And uh, because we uh, we we are very we're culinary professionals, we do use cutlery. Uh, what we've done is we did a uh, deep fried beaver tail and a little egg wash in our my special breading, and we actually uh, cooked one on the grill with our actually anniversary barbecue sauce. So we're just actually going to eat it. And I'm just, I want to know what you think. Sure. So I'll go first, just so you don't think Let's it's a start with the fried one? Let's start with the fried one. Right. Awesome. It really does taste good. It tastes like food. It tastes like food, but it is definitely... I feel the calories like I'm building yeah. calories right now. I taste the fried more than I taste anything else, which is awesome. Yeah, right. but it but it's it basically not bad. Trust me, if you're in a survival situation, as you know, I'm sure in full tank bushcraft you run into this all the time. 
And you need <laughs> to put some calories in your in your uh, metabolism. A beaver tail is probably the best bet. Yeah. If you can bread it and fry it, all the better, right? Mm. Yeah, if you can find somebody That's with some calories going away. Are you kidding me? Right yeah. yeah. That's not, it's really no, not it's bad. good. It's not bad. I mean, I, I thought it, honestly, it's like, if it, as long as it's not vile, I can eat it. <laughs> I'll eat anything. But, obviously the deep fry helps. But, let's, uh, let's try the barbecue method. See what you think of that. I'm going to jam the fork in there. Yep. And rip it apart. <clears throat> Fork on a plate. Best thing in the world. I'll tell you what. Even you know what, better. You know what that is? When I go out and spend sixty dollars on barbecue baby back ribs, and there's a little piece of fat on the end, that's what that is. Oh my God, you're right. That's what. That's that is. That's exactly what that is. Yep. That's the fat on the back on the baby back ribs. Delicious. It, it is delicious. Absolutely. Oh. No other way to explain it. I'm impressed. Well done. Honestly. Well done. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Well done, sir. Thank you. Um, however, it really wasn't that hard. We just literally deep fried one, barbecued <laughs> the other. And you know, when something you when you when anything's questionable if you deep fry it, it's gonna taste well you're right, my left. <laughs> I feel like I'm at like a smokehouse. Like I'm eating wings. wings. Yeah. There's a smokehouse in Louisiana. Louisiana. It's freaking delicious. Mm hmm. Absolutely delicious. I mean, it's just fat and joy. I was, hoping it, is. I was hoping it was edible. This is delicious. Let's go trap some beavers. Hey, man.